In this video, we're going to be uh, uh, looking at uh, the Hewn method and the midpoint method uh, for um, finding uh, or solving initial value problems. Uh, first, we're going to uh, recap what we studied before. First, the explicit Euler method, which uh, when we uh, studied it, we uh, mentioned that it, its its error is directly proportional to h, which h is the time uh, increment. Um, the explicit Euler method predicts the new uh, x i plus one at time t i plus one, knowing the value of x i at time uh, t i by evaluating the slope at the initial point, evaluating dx by dt as a function of uh, xi and ti. So the slope evaluated at this point, from the slope at this point, we can predict um, the value of xi plus one. We also studied the implicit Euler method, which we also mentioned that it was uh, the error uh, term is directly proportional to h. In the implicit Euler method, the slope uh, used to find the next point xi plus 1 is evaluated at the new point at x sub i plus 1. So using the slope, we, uh, um, we, we, we uh, march forward in time from the point xi knowing uh, the value of xi at time ti. And using that slope, we can find the value of x sub i plus 1 at time ti plus 1. So dx by dt is evaluated at the point x sub i plus 1 and time t sub i plus 1. The Hewn method, which is uh, slightly more accurate, evaluates the slope as the average of the two slopes, the slopes at the initial point and the slope at the final point. The midpoint method uh, is also a little bit more accurate. It's uh, directly, the error term is directly proportional to h squared. The slope is evaluated at the midpoint. The midpoint is denoted by x sub i plus half and uh, t i plus half. And so you can see here the point x sub i plus 1 is uh, evaluated by uh, starting at point x sub i and t i and moving uh, on a slope that is equal to the value of the slope at the midpoint between the two um, uh, between the two points using the slope right here move, we can march forward in time and evaluate the point x sub i plus one so we're going to uh, start with the Hewn's method if uh, or given an initial value problem uh, dx by dt given as a function of the x and t x i plus 1 is equal to x sub i plus h multiplied by um, these uh, the, the, the f uh, the, 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 the slope at x sub i plus 1 and the slope at x sub i and this actually term is the, the, the error term here is directly proportional to h cubed uh, this is uh, this is a local uh, Error. This is the error in one time increment. On the whole domain, uh, the error is equal to uh, that small error or that, that uh, local error multiplied by uh, L divided by H. These are the number of time increments. And so the error is actually directly proportional to H squared. Now, the question is how do I evaluate the slope at Xi plus 1 if I don't know uh, the value of xi plus 1. And uh, one way to do this is to initially evaluate uh, an initial value, xi plus 1, 0. Uh, this can be evaluated, for example, using the explicit Euler method. Uh, and so once we get an initial estimate for xi uh, sub i plus 1, we can then evaluate the slopes uh, at xi plus 1 and then get the average of the two slopes. Alternatively, we can write, uh, uh, we can uh, do, uh, we can follow what we did for the implicit Euler method, where if the equations are nonlinear, we can do uh, 
we can use um, the Newton Nafson method to find the value of x i plus one using uh, this equation. However, we're going to adopt the first approach where an initial estimate for x sub i plus one is calculated using the explicit Euler method, and then the slope is calculated accordingly. Here's a, a mathematical code that um, em employs the Hewn's method to be able to um, calculate the, uh, the table made out of the values of x corresponding to the values of t. So we're going to solve example four that we solved in the previous lecture. We have this nonlinear initial value problem given by dx by dt is equal to tx squared plus 2x. The initial condition, the starting uh, uh, value is when the time is equal to zero, the value of x is equal to negative five. And we'd like to march in time with a time step or time increment of h is equal to 0 0.1. In the previous example, we used the implicit Euler method. In this example, we want to use the Hewn's method. So in order to employ the Hewn's method, we wish to calculate the slope um, as the average of the two slopes. So uh, the, the, the slope is equal to the average of the slope at the initial point and the slope at the final point. But we don't know the final point yet. And so we evaluate the final point using the explicit Euler method. X sub i plus one, uh, uh, the initial estimate zero, is equal to x sub i plus h multiplied by dx over dt, dx by dt evaluated at the initial point. So let's uh, see how this is implemented. All right, so initially we've got the first x is equal to negative five, t naught is equal to zero, h is equal to 0 0.1, this is the time increment, t1 is equal to 0 0.1. First, we need to estimate the value, the new uh, x1, and we're going to use the explicit Euler method. The explicit Euler method states that x1 is equal to x naught, plus h multiplied by the slope, here's the slope, evaluated at the initial point. The initial point is t0 and x0. So we substitute x0 and t0, and we get an initial estimate for x1. But we know that this initial estimate is based on the explicit Euler method, and it's not very accurate. To find a better, a more accurate uh, estimate, we're going to use the Hewn's method. The Hewn's method, x1, which is the more accurate one, is equal to x0 plus h over 2, multiplied by the average, uh, so h multiplied by the average of the two slopes. So h over two multiplied by the slope at the initial point and the slope at the final point. The slope at the initial point is given as t naught x naught squared plus two x naught. Here's the slope evaluated at t naught and x naught. And here the slope at the final point is evaluated by t1 and uh, the value of x1, which is the initial estimate for the value of x1. And so substituting all the values, um, Here's the value of x1, here's the value of t1, here's the value of h, t0 and x0. I can find x1, the better estimate, which is equal to negative 5.92. Now, starting from this estimate of x1, now we can move on to x2. Again, to be able to use uh, the Hewn's method, we need an initial estimate for x2. So an initial estimate for x2 can be obtained using the explicit Euler method. x2, uh, an initial estimate, is equal to x1, negative 5.92, plus h multiplied by the slope. This is the explicit Euler method. I will use the slope at uh, this initial point for the second increment, so or for the second time step. And so this will be evaluated at, at t1 and x1. I know the value of x1. I know the value of t1, which is 0 0.1, so I can get an initial estimate for x2. Again, this is the estimate based on the explicit Euler method. It's not very accurate, so we're going to uh, use the Hewn's method to get a better estimate for x2. To get a better estimate for x2, x2 is equal to x1 plus h multiplied by the average of the slopes. This is the slope at uh, the point t1 and x1. And this is the slope at t2 and the initial estimate of x2. 
substituting, we'll get negative 6.556. And um, this is a better estimate for X2 than the one using the explicit Euler method. All right. So uh, if we use this method, and uh, you can see here, the blue line is the exact uh, solution to the uh, this differential equation and the black dots are the um, predictions using the Hune's method and you can see the, the the method for this example is pretty accurate as the black dots really um, are, are overlapping with the uh, exact solution uh, on your website, you will see a tool that allows you to check how uh, the Hune's method, um, to, uh, how uh, the accuracy of the Hune's method in comparison with the Euler method for this example by changing. Uh, if you log on, if you uh, log on the website and change the value of h, you'll see how, with of course, with with larger h, with larger time steps, the accuracy is lost in both methods. However. You can see right away for the same value of h, the Hune's method is still able to predict um, good estimations for uh, the values of x versus the Euler's method where the accuracy is lost, especially where there is large changes in the slope. Where here we can see that the slope is changing from one uh, from um, negative to positive right in this area. Uh, there is very um, there is a, a you can see that the Euler's method is not very accurate. The Hune's method is a little bit more accurate because it uses the average of the slopes at the end of at the beginning and the end of the increment. The other method that we want to discuss today is the midpoint method. The midpoint method uh, um, utilizes the fact that uh, this equation x sub i plus 1 is equal to x sub i plus delta t which is h multiplied by uh, f which is the slope at the midpoint this is uh, the midpoint is x i plus 1 plus x i divided by 2 t i plus 1 plus t i divided by 2 and this has an error term that's directly proportional to h cubed that's in one small time increment uh, over the whole domain it has n sub increments which are equal to l divided by h when we uh, evaluate this the error is directly proportional to h squared similar to the hune's method uh, the midpoint method relies on knowing the value of x in the middle of the increment we of course know the time the, the time because this is an input to the problem the output is the value of x uh, we don't know the value of x in the middle of the increment and so we can use the explicit Euler method to find an initial estimate for x sub i uh, plus half. So similar to what we did in the Hune's method. Again, here is uh, an, uh, a Mathematica code that you can copy and paste in your uh, Mathematica um, software that will allow you to generate data for given a particular um, uh, 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 differential equation given a particular form for uh, dx by dt and given an initial um, value for x naught given a time increment h and given an initial uh, value for t naught and given uh, the value of t max you'll generate a data of uh, time versus x all right so the midpoint method here is the same example that we solved in uh, using the Hune's method and the implicit Euler method. Same differential equation, x, the initial conditions are when, when time is zero, x is equal to negative five. Uh, we'd like to march in time with a time increment of 0 0.1. We'd like to know what the values of x are as we march in time. The midpoint method relies on evaluating the slope at the middle of the increment, which means I need an initial estimate for the middle of the increment. For this, I will use the explicit Euler method. I will evaluate x i plus half is equal to x sub i plus the slope multiplied by h divided by 2, because that will take me to the middle of the increment. 
This is an initial estimate for x sub i plus half. It's not very accurate because I'm using the explicit Euler method. I will make it more accurate or I'll, I'll, I'll use that value to get a good estimate for x sub i plus 1 as equal to x sub i plus h multiplied by dx over dt evaluated in the middle of the increment. All right, let's implement this. x naught is equal to negative 5, t naught is 0, the increment in time is, H is 0 0.1, and t1 is equal to 0 0.1. I need an initial estimate for the uh, middle of the increment, which is x sub half. Initial estimate for initial estimates, I, s I use the superscript 0 between two brackets. So this initial estimate is equal to x naught, negative 5, plus h over 2, multiplied by the slope evaluated at the beginning of the increment. I know t naught, x naught, and so on. I will get an initial estimate for the x in the middle of the increment. I can use this to evaluate x sub 1 as equal to negative 5 plus h multiplied by the slope in the middle. The slope in the middle is given by the time in the middle, which is time at 0 0.5, x sub 0 0.5, and so on. Um, which will give me an uh, initial uh, an estimate for x1 uh, that's equal to negative 5.949. All right. As we move on, uh, we can also estimate an initial estimate for x sub 1.5. This is evaluated by x1, which is negative 5.949, plus h over 2 multiplied by the slope at the beginning of the increment which is at t1 and x1. By substituting, we get an initial estimate for x sub 1.5. We can then use this uh, um, initial estimate to evaluate the, uh, to find a good estimate for x sub 2. x sub 2 is equal to x sub 1, negative 5.949, plus h, which is 1, uh, which is 0 0.1, multiplied by the values of the slope evaluated in the middle of the increment. In the middle of the increment, x sub 1.5 is given by negative 6.3667. t sub 1.5 is the time increment in between t1 and t2. t1 is 0 0.1, t2 is 0 0.2, and so t sub 1.5 is in the middle of the increment, t sub 1.5 is given as 0 0.15. Substituting, I will get this good estimate for x2, negative 6.614. Again, uh, when we uh, overlap the output from this method on the um, exact solution given by the blue line, we can see that this method is pretty accurate for this nonlinear uh, initial value problem. Again, similar to the Hewn's method, uh, the if I use a large, uh, 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 a relatively large value of h, the Euler method loses accuracy where the slope is changing. The midpoint method is uh, actually follows the curve and is giving very good results in comparison to the exact solution.